I've been reading uh, some articles uh, and there are pictures that are going to start to come out. They're starting to do better than the, the ones that came out, the few that did come out over these last several months. Look, the only thing I can say, if you take the 1918 pandemic, uh, then you had the Roaring Twenties. Okay, so... I'm not saying we're going to go from COVID to the equivalent of the Roaring Twenties, but it seems like the world from the 1918 pandemic got back to normal in a, in a way that was very, very workable, okay? All I can say is I hope and I'm encouraged by certain signs and um, you know, your state, he's got the whole thing open. Okay. Uh, my state in California, not so much. Um, so your theaters may be a hundred percent full. I don't know if he's got any restrictions right now on, you know, capacity of movie theaters. I don't think he cares, um, uh, about that. You know, I don't think he cares. Well, I'm not going to get into it. Um, so, uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged whether it gets back to pre COVID levels. I, I couldn't say I'm just encouraged and I hope it does. But, but what you have to do as a filmmaker, uh, is adjust and adapt. And this has been the history of film. Okay. The jazz singer was one of the great moments in all of cinema, but it now put a lot of those marquee movie actors who had high voices that the audience never heard what their voice was like, um, uh, that ended their careers, okay? Some could not get used to the dialogue, uh, you know, maybe they had, uh, you know, accents, okay? That it didn't matter in the silence, okay? So that's the, the, the most dramatic example, if you will, of moving from silence to talkies, all right? But that's the history of the film business. Television came in, you know, the 40s, and, you know, then that was a threat to theatrical exhibition, color, uh, the digital uh, revolution, streaming. Um, you know, I t I'm a storyteller. And it doesn't matter what the platform is. Some platforms are better uh, to tell. If I have a story that has a uh, hundred hours, obviously it's better as the television than it is as a feature. And if I have a story that's two hours that can be told in a very interesting way, then that's a movie. But is it a, is it a movie if it's now on Netflix and doesn't go into the theater? Is that called a movie or is that called television movie? I don't know. But does it really matter? Does it really matter? No question that a comedy, you know, if you're sitting there by yourself watching it versus you're sitting it in a communal uh, uh, situation like in the theater, it's a wonderful experience. Yeah, I think you can probably watch dramas by yourself and uh, you could watch comedies by yourself, but probably comedies are more fun to see with other people. Uh, I would suggest, you know, look, you know, if you, you know, the Marvel movies and I'm, you know, I'm of an age where that's not hitting my target for the most part, but uh, I would think that those movies, even though you can see them at home, are much better in the, in the theaters, you know, yeah. uh, we're never going to take that communal experience away, I don't think. But you, you said at the top of this uh, interview, you want this for posterity for 100 years. I don't know what it's going to look like in 100 years.